Hello, I'm Joseph Akins, professor for the Department of Recording Industry at Middle Tennessee State University. This is the fourth video in a series covering the fundamentals of synthesizer programming. If you are just joining us, be sure to check out the other three preceding videos. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to a controller called the envelope generator. First, I would like to review the controller. Let's take a look at this diagram. Notice in this diagram, a controller is connected to another module, such as a source in this example, with a voltage control signal. So therefore, it is not part of the audio path. It will control another module with a voltage control signal. In this next diagram, you'll see that we have an oscillator, filter, amplifier, the audio signal path, and then we have a controller that's controlling the amplifier. This controller is an envelope generator. The envelope generator will allow you to shape loudness over time. It's also referred to as an ADSR. That stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain, Relief. What I'd like to do is talk about those four stages in detail. What's the attack, decay, sustain, and relief? The attack stage is the time it takes for a loudness to go from zero to maximum. Let's take a look at this diagram. Notice in this diagram, when the key is pressed, in other words, at key on, loudness will go from minimum to maximum in two seconds. This two seconds was determined by a knob on your synthesizer referred to as the attack. Let's take a look at that knob on the Moog Voyager. Over here, the volume or loudness attack is set to about two seconds. So when I press a key, loudness will go from zero to maximum in about two seconds. Now, I can make that quicker or I can make it longer. The next stage is referred to as the decay stage. The decay stage is the time it takes for loudness to go from maximum back to the sustain level. Let's take a look at this diagram. Notice in this diagram, I have added the decay stage. So, Loudness will go at key on from zero to maximum in two seconds, and then it will go from maximum back to zero in two more seconds. That's because sustain, the next stage, is set to zero. Let's listen to the Moog Voyager to see what that sounds like. Underneath the attack knob, I have the decay knob. I have both of them set to approximately two seconds. So you hear loudness go from zero to maximum and then maximum to zero in about four seconds total. Here we go. Now let's make the decay stage quicker so that we still have an attack of two seconds, but then we will drop back to zero very quickly. Let's make it even longer than two seconds, the decay stage even longer. The next stage is sustain. Differently from attack and decay, it is a level setting and not a time setting. Let's take a look at this diagram. Notice in this diagram, after we press the key and go through the attack and decay stage, sustain will remain at a specific level until key off. So therefore, loudness will go up and then it will come back down to the sustain level setting and will remain there until key off. Let's take a look at the Moog Voyager. Notice here, we have the sustain setting beneath attack and decay. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit. Now what you'll hear is the loudness go through the attack, decay, and then it will remain at sustain level until I release the key. So listen carefully as loudness 
steps between these different stages. The final stage is the release stage, and it's the time it takes for loudness to go from sustained levels back to zero, and it begins whenever we release the key. Let's take a look at this diagram. Notice that after sustain, we have release going back to zero within two seconds. This begins whenever I release a key at key off. Let's listen to this on the Moog Voyager. Notice over here, at the very bottom of my envelope, I have the release knob, and I'm going to bring this up, oh, to about two seconds. So after the sound has gone through all these stages and I release the key, it will take approximately two seconds for loudness re to return back to zero. Those are the four stages that you'll typically find for an envelope generator, the ADSR. Now, in this example, we looked at how you can route the envelope generator to an amplifier, but it's not limited to the amplifier. You can also use an envelope generator on a filter, on an oscillator, even more. In this diagram, you can see that we have two envelope generators. One is going to the amplifier for loudness change, and the other one is going to the filter so that we can shape timbre over time. What I'm going to do now is just play a, a few examples of using an envelope generator on the filter. That brings us to the conclusion of this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at a controller called the Low Frequency Oscillator. Be sure to check that out. And for more in-depth coverage of synthesizer programming, be sure to get my book from the website themidiprofessor.com. There, you will find how to get the electronic music books we use at MTSU and more. So thanks again for checking out the Fundamentals of Synthesizer Programming video series.